C Sharp 9 is right around the corner. One of our favorite new features is record types. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode we're going to take a look at record types again very quickly. Those of you who pay attention to the channel will notice that we have recently recorded an episode on record types, but we recorded it on F sharp record types because we weren't sure how to get access to C sharp 9's preview that had records in it. Well, we figured it out uh, thanks to McNerdius who posted a comment on that video. So let's take a look and see what's necessary to do that right here. Uh, so I have Visual Studio Code up here, and I just created a brand new project. Uh, and in it, well, first of all, I, I created it with the latest version of the SDK. SDKs. Uh, so that is 501 Preview 7. Uh, so when I created a new project, I just used the console template, and I got a CS proj and a program.cs. Uh, in there, the target framework was already set to net 5.0, but I added this lang version preview here. So this is necessary to unlock the C Sharp 9 features. Uh, over here in program.cs, I have gone and created a very simple record type here called fish. Uh, and in it, I have created just a name string here. Uh, and you normally pass this thing get set, but in the case of this being a record, uh, I passed it init. So that basically means that you can only set this property when you init the object. Uh, now, in the, the previous video, when we looked at the blog post on record types, the syntax was like this, data class fish. Uh, that's simply changed over to being record now in the latest release. So that's a little bit simpler and easier to remember. Uh, so I also created a fish class, so we could just take a look at some of the, the differences here. Uh, so starting off, I created this fish class here. Oops, and that should be here and here too. Uh, so I created these two fish classes and we're going to check them for equality. So first of all, we have fish A and fish B. One's name is Swimmy and the other one is Splashy. Uh, classic fish names, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, so these two are not going to be equivalent uh, because obviously they're different objects and they have different values for the, the properties within them. So if we go and just run this here, dot run, uh, we'll see that we do in fact get false for that first comparison. Uh, so we're now going to new up another one called fish C. Uh, that's not to be confused with a C fish, which is a completely different thing. Uh, so this one is also going to be named swimmy. Uh, so when these types are classes, fish A and fish C, despite having exactly the same properties inside them, are different. And this is, of course, because the comparison here is going to actually be comparing whether they are the exact same object and not whether they are equivalent objects. So let's move on to a record type here. So you can see the constructor here is pretty much the same, or the construction here. I shouldn't use constructor for this. Uh, so fish1 is swimmy and splashy, and these two, uh, they remain unequal. So they are not equivalent, of course, because they're completely different objects and they have different values for name. Uh, but once I create fish3 here, if I give it the same name as fish1, uh, then that becomes an equivalent object. So we end up with true being here. So fish3 and fish1 are equal uh, because they're record types. Uh, so we could create even yet another fish here called uh, fish4. And we're going to use... The, the slightly new syntax here where we're going to use with. So we're going to take uh, fish2 with, and then we can pass it properties in here. So name equals swimmy. Uh, and fish4 and fish1 should be equivalent to, and I guess by the transitive property, so should fish3. So let's take a look at this one here. So hopefully this returns true. All right, so there we go. 
Uh, so this syntax here, this with, is basically a really light way of copying an existing object, but with some changed fields. So fish is a little bit boring right now. We can expand that. Like string, uh, what properties does fish have? Height, it's an odd property for fish, but uh, we'll set it. And that should probably be a double or some unit. Uh, and we'll give it a double width. This is a very odd sort of database of fish, but uh, with that, we could now do things like just changing this to be, so let's make this fish one with height equals 20. So now if we run this again and we take a look and see if things are equivalent, we're going to get false. So even though uh, the names are the same between fish one and fish four, everybody's called swimmy, uh, because we have an additional property here, height, then these records are no longer equivalent. So this is a really quick way to build up objects that are just going to have properties on them and are going to need to have equivalents. So I really like records. It's going to be like totally my go-to thing in the future. And I'm super excited about C Sharp 9 and having them. So that's it for this episode. Uh, remember to like, comment, and share. And if you find problems like McNerdius did, feel free to write us a comment down below and we will take a look at them. We'll read every single one of them. Uh, and sometimes we sit back and think about how hurt our feelings are because people are a little bit mean in comments. But that's okay. We'll get over it. So we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye.